Today, I'm going to show you step by step how to set up a headless Rockchip RK3588 device to run a large language model and send the output to WebUI. A huge shout out to Causot, aka Admirable underscore Prowling on Reddit, for doing the massive legwork of, you know, actually creating the script, and for also converting a huge number of models for use. So I'm really just taking what they did and giving step by step instructions for those who need a little help with the technical details. In terms of hardware, I'm using an Orange Pi 5 Plus with 16 gigabytes of RAM. However, this tutorial should apply to most Rockchip RK3588 devices, such as other variants of the Orange Pi 5, or Rockchip devices from other vendors like Ratixa. You could probably run many of these models with 8 gigabytes of RAM, though you'll have much more limited selection. Anyway, let's get started. First, we are going to install the operating system. I'm using the latest release of the Joshua Reich Ubuntu because it comes with the Rockchip and Pew drivers pre-installed. As you can see, he has many different versions for different Rockchip devices. I'm going to find the version for my board, the Orange Pi 5 Plus, and download the server version to squeeze the absolute maximum amount of RAM out of the system. Once you have it downloaded, use Bailina Etcher or your choice of utility to flash the image to an SD card NVMe drive, or whatever you want to boot off of. Then, plug it into your device and get it booted up. Once the device is booted up, I'm going to log into it with Winscape. Make sure, if you're doing this for the first time, that you change the default password from its value of Ubuntu to something that only you know. Next, I'm going to open up a PuTTY window so I have access to the terminal. One thing that gave me an error the first time was that PIP was not already installed. So let's do that first. Now that that's done, we're going to go over to Causot's repository for the Gradio script and follow the step-by-step -step copy and paste instructions to get it installed. Next, you might have to refresh Winscape to see the folder you just created. Once you can, go into it and then into the Models subfolder. Now we're going to upload the models we want into this folder. But wait, you might be asking, where did you get this converted RKLLM model? Well, I'm glad you asked. As it turns out, Causot has been very busy converting all these models to the proper format. So, all you need to do is go into the Hugging Face profile for him, and then find the models you want to run. There are a few caveats. When you go into the repository for an individual model and look at the files, you'll see there's actually a bunch of different versions. Um, so these are just different quantization settings. Um, and honestly, I don't really know which ones are the best. You might actually have to test them yourself. It might just vary model by model. But I typically just use the opt1, which the opt1 means it's optimized during quantization. Um, 0, 0.0, um, and they, they've seemed to work fine so far. What is going to be important for these models is to make sure that the chip identifier in the model name matches your board, which in this case should be RK3588. And also, you need to make sure the number at the end matches your RKLLM runtime package version. I was able to run models converted to 1.1.1 version, even though I was running 1.1.2, but your mileage may vary, so you should keep it to the exact one if possible. Now that our model has been fully uploaded, we need to edit a file called models underscore configs.py in the base directory of the script to make sure the program uses the correct settings for our models. First, we have to make sure the model's file name matches the file name in the config file, so I'm going to copy the file name for the file I just uploaded. So there's a lot of text in here, and it seems kind of intimidating, but we really just need to find the text that already exists for our model. So I'm going to scroll down and find the Gemma2IT. All right, so I'm just going to copy and paste that file name into here. And the other thing we have to worry about is to make sure that our model ID matches the Hugging Face repository. That way it pulls the correct settings. So just basically, Click on this, and then you can copy it into there. 
The last setting we care about is called maximum context length. For those that don't know, it basically increases the amount of text that the model can process at once. And we care because higher context increases RAM usage. For Gemma 2, I can set it to the model maximum of 8192 for both the 8 billion and 9 billion parameter versions. For other models, it's not quite as high. Um, and here's a quick summary of the maximum context I was able to use with 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you set it too high or beyond the model's maximum, it will cause the script to crash. And at long last, we are finally ready to run this script. So open up a new terminal session and then make note of your IP address because you will need that to access the interface later. So the first thing we're gonna do is change to the directory of that script. And then we are gonna use the Python 3 command um, because the Python regular command just didn't work for me on a fresh Ubuntu install. And now it is started up. So to get to it, we're going to have to paste that IP address in our browser with the colon 8080 at the end for the port, and it has loaded up. So the first thing we're going to do is select from our drop down the model. Mine's going to take forever because it's on an SD card instead of an NVMe. But once that's done, all you got to do is go to text to text and say, hello, who are you? And we're done. All right. So I lied. There's a couple more things. The first thing is, you know how it said totally not Skynet. Um, if you want to change that, that's a really easy fix. All you got to do is go into the script file, search for Skynet, and then just replace that with whatever text you like. I'm just going to call it opi5 plus 16 GB. And then all you got to do is save that and reload, and it should say whatever you just put in. So the second one is to take a quick look at some more settings in that models underscore config file. So the first set are these top K, top P, and temperature. So all these are kind of variations of the same thing. Basically, as you increase these, the randomness of the model goes up, which can be good or bad depending on your use case. And the other ones are the repeat penalty and frequency penalty, which penalize repeated words that prevents it from doing you know repeated gpt isms in both cases you only want to adjust one of these settings not all of them and that's it thanks for watching and see you next time maybe